you can order your copy of my 2021 NFL Draft Guide today. What you'll get is over 550 individual prospect scouting reports like you see here, a ton of information that'll help you keep track of who your favorite team drafts or even signs as a free agent. It's all here, over 650 full color pages in PDF form. You can order your copy at the following link, footballgameplan.com slash 2021 draft guide. Emory Hunt, the czar of the playbook here with football game plan scouting. And you know what that means. The NFL draft and CFL draft for 2021 is rapidly approaching and it's time to get into our prospect rankings for this year's draft class. And before we get started, let's take a look at what the grades that you'll see by the prospects actually mean. We'll kick off the safety position with the free safeties and checking in at number one is Adarius Washington out of TCU. You know my mantra, size is not a skill. So don't look at his frame and make a judgment on his game. Washington is explosive in all directions, a fluid athlete who is smooth in his back pedal and an instinctive playmaker with A plus ball skills. He reminds me a lot of Tyron Matthew of the Kansas City Chiefs. Richard LeCount III of Georgia is a fantastic safety, one of the better deep safeties in the class because of his instincts and ball skills. He's a mistake eraser on, the, eraser on the back end, and he takes fantastic angles to the ball in all aspects of defense. So I believe he's a big time playmaker in the mold of Eddie Jackson for the Chicago Bears. And Sean Davis of Florida checks in at number three on our list. I'm a big fan of how he is able to close on a ball carrier and on the ball once it's in the air. He's an enforcer type hitter that can get some knockback upon contact and in some cases can jar the ball loose. He's a plant and drive guy with tremendous acceleration. Now here's a look at the rest of the top 10 free safeties in the class. Southern Mrs. Kyle Hemby has good recovery speed and burst and could serve as a strong safety for a team in my opinion. Sort of like Ronnie Harrison of the Cleveland Browns. Reed Blankenship of Middle Tennessee State has good acceleration off the edge when he's asked to blitz and is able to make a lot of plays behind the line of scrimmage. He and Wisconsin's Eric Burrell are two safeties that take really good angles to the football. Bryce Thompson of Tennessee was mainly a starter at corner for Tennessee, but started at safety versus South Carolina. Give you an idea of his potential, and he picked up a pass from the safety position versus Auburn, and I think he's just really good with the ball in front of him, so why not let him grow and blossom at the safety position? Looking at the rest of the free safety prospects, 11 through 17, and Troy Werner of BYU shows good discipline in his deep third responsibilities when he's asked to serve in that role. He's a guy that won't get you beat back deep on the back end. Caden Stearns of Texas is a really good player in robber coverage, able to sniff out the ball and make a play on it. As a too high guy, I think he's got the range to quickly get over top and would be much better serving in that capacity as a pro player. Now moving on to the strong safeties, and it's a strong group for lack of a better word. At number one is Richie Grant from UCF, and he has explosive closing speed to the ball carrier and to the receiver, and he arrives like juggernaut upon contact. He's that extra hat in the run game and also brings great ball skills to the table. His game reminds me a lot of Brian Dawkins. Trayvon Morig of TCU was a Jim Thorpe Award winner given to the nation's top defensive back. He provides a good blend of skills, both in coverage and in the run game. You rarely see bust in coverage, and I think he's a versatile player who is ideally suited to play in a split safety defense. Paris Ford out of Pitt is consistently excellent in the run game. His assertive angles in that regard seem to always have him arriving where he needs to be. He's got good overall football awareness for the position and is a plug and play guy on day one. Jarrell White of Cincinnati was a linebacker for the Bearcats, but has excellent athleticism and football awareness to be a solid, strong safety convert at the NFL level. He's got the excellent short area burst with linebacker eyes and keys in the short area passing game, getting himself in position to consistently make the play. Here is a look at the rest of the top 10 strong safeties in the draft class. Another Cincinnati Bearcat and Derek Forrest cracks the list at number eight. He's got above average ball skills for safety. And I was also pleasantly surprised at the game of Jamie Sherwood of Auburn at 6'2", 220, he's a good alley defender that flows to the football rather well. And Christian Uphoff of Illinois State played well down at the recent Senior Bowl this past January, showcasing his athleticism and his versatility that he displayed back with the Redbirds in college. He's able to play both safety spots and match up well in man coverage versus tight ends. Jacoby Stevens of LSU is a former wide receiver turned safety. 
who is both athletic and versatile. He also served in a pass rushing role and as a nickel linebacker in addition to his safety duties. So I think he gives you a unique chess piece on defense. Looking at the rest of the prospects, 11 through 20, and Quinterio Cole of Alcorn State has fantastic ball skills and ball awareness. No pass is safe with him around there in the secondary. Tavante Beckett of Marshall is an instinctual player at the second level as he was a stellar linebacker for the Thundering Herd, but he has a good agility to make the transition to strong safety in the NFL. He's got that dart and dash ability that you look for. Virginia Tech Divine Diablo has tremendous length and range in coverage. I think his sneaky athleticism and acceleration gives offense fits as he can get from the box to deep third within the blink of an eye. Tyler Coyle of Purdue was excellent at UConn before transferring this year to the Boilermakers, and I think many forgot about his Huskies career. He's got some fluidity within his movements and was a true strong safety at UConn before playing more of a linebacker hybrid role at Purdue. He also returned kicks at UConn as well. In rounding out the strong safety prospects with 21 through 24, Lamont Wade of Penn State closes well on the receiver and does a great job of shrinking space when going downhill. He has the above average quicks and bursts of the ball, and I believe he's a day one core special team on coverage units as well as a kickoff returner. Finally, we move on to the combo safeties, versatile guys that can do it all. And at number one is Andre Sisco of Syracuse. He's got top-notch athleticism and is a good all-around football player. He can legitimately play any one of the five spots on the back end with the great ball skills to turn the ball over. And we'll see how he's able to recover from the ACL injury he suffered this past season. Darren Hall of San Diego State checks in at number two. He's got elite level ball skills and ball instincts. He's a terrific matchup player who can play on the boundary, inside as a slot corner, or either safety spot. His football awareness is top tier and rarely has mental bust out there on the field. Michael Carter II out of Duke has a great combination of skills for the pro game. He can play all three corner spots as well as safety. He excels in man coverage and is able to play through the hands of the wide receiver when in coverage, stand in phase the entire way. And I also like how fluid he moves and able to work through zone coverage. Tariq Thompson is yet another San Diego State Aztec that makes this list. Dude has tremendous ball skills and is very good at diagnosing pass patterns in zone and subsequently getting himself in the best position to make a play. He's solid all around the line of scrimmage and run support and can serve in a multitude of roles as a pro player in the secondary. Here is how the rest of the top 10 shakes out at the position. Javon Holland of Oregon has good football awareness and strong ability in zone. I think he's one of the better zone defenders in the draft class. Damar Hamlin was excellent at Pitt his entire career. He's a terrific all-around football player who plays well on both ends of defense. Joshua Bledsoe out of Missouri has the athleticism that you want and the ability to be a strong matchup defender as a pro. So does Sean Wade out of Ohio State, who's much better inside than he was outside this past season. I believe he's a plant and accelerate type guy that is a top-notch blitzer in the secondary. But you really need to get to know Nelson Locombo out of the University of Saskatchewan. He's got one of the most explosive breaks on the ball that you'll see at the position. He trusts what he sees out there on the field and is able to explode in that direction. He's an excellent blitzer coming off the corner and is stellar in alley support. He was a 2019 U Sports Defensive Player of the Year and is one of the top CFL draft prospects as well who had an invite to the 2021 East West Shrine Bowl. And you want to talk about San Diego State, how about Syracuse with the secondary prospects? Trill Williams can be a matchup defender depending on the game plan as he has the ability to play multiple positions. And because of his cornerback background, he's solid in man coverage and uses his length to perfection out there on the field. He leads off the list of prospects 11 through 18. Brad Stewart Jr. of Florida is a prospect who I really like as a versatile matchup defender in one-on-one -on -one situations. He can really close on the ball very well. I can even see a path for him as a boundary corner at the pro level a la Trey Flowers. It's just a really good class of safeties this draft cycle. So that's it for this edition of Football Game Plan Scouting. I'm Emery Hunt, the czar of the playbook. Be sure to follow me on all of my social media accounts. And don't forget to check out and subscribe to the Football Game Plan Network located at youtube.com slash football game plan. Also subscribe on iTunes to Football Game Plan Podcast and leave us a five-star rating. That's where you can find our Scout Team Podcast and keep it locked every Thursday at 6.30 p.m. Eastern Time on the Game Plus Network for our Scout Team show, where we will have a lot more of NFL and CFL draft-related content coming down the pike.